Hello, thank you for inviting me to take part in the conference Life is No Algorithm. I'm sorry because I'm not with you in Hamburg as I had to leave just after the current conference after facing serious health problems. As you might know, I will talk about social media and their role in the Tunisian revolution. Indeed, just after the ouster of the dictator Zin al-Abidin bin Ali from Tunisia on January 14th, 2011, and with the beginning of the so-called Arab Spring, experts, journalists, researchers, and people around the world highlighted the role of online activism in the Tunisian revolution and during the tide of mass protests that swept through North Africa and the Middle East. People around the globe started talking about a Facebook revolution, an internet revolution, a Facebook revolution, a Twitter revolution, or a 2.0 revolution. They shed light on the crucial role bloggers and cyber activists played in the toppling of the dispot. The domino effect that occurred subsequently in other parts of the Arab world further consolidated this idea. For months, we did nothing but thoroughly study social media networks and analyze their role in fulfilling the hopes and dreams of the Tunisian and Egyptian youths. It was said that this youth, who had longed for a total rupture from the old governance which had marginalized and drove them away from public participation for several generations, had finally succeeded in toppling at least two regimes by leveraging information and communication technologies, ICT. But how true are these claims? What was the role played by the internet and online activists in the Arab uprisings and in the Tunisian revolution in particular? Can we really start and lead a revolution by just using the internet? Furthermore, what was the role of the internet after the ouster of these dictators? Did cyber activists succeed in using it to fulfill democratic transitions? I will try to answer these questions in this chapter focusing on the Tunisian context. I will start with the role of online activism prior to the revolutionary process in Tunisia. On December 17, 2010, followed by its role during the Tunisian uprising from December um, from uh, the 17th of December 2010 to uh, the 14th of January 2011. After I will deal with the role of social media and online activism after the ouster of the dispute Ben Ali. To finish, I will tackle the issue of how successful online activism is. In order to understand the role of online activism under the regime of the dictator Ben Ali, we have to look at the context of that period. Indeed, for more than half a century, my country didn't experience more than two presidents. Both of those presidents were forced to leave office, the first following a coup hatched by his successor, and the second under popular demand for his departure from office. In January 2011, he coerced fled the wrath of youth, youth who challenged his oppressive forces, his minions, and the omnipotence of his party state. When the events started, Tunisians didn't only live in difficult economic and social situations caused by the spread of mafia-type practices and aggravated by corruption and nepotism, but they were also prevented from expressing themselves freely. They had to live both in fear and misery. The causes for Tunisian revolt can be summarized by the slogan that was widely chanted from December 2010 to January 2011, employment, freedom and dignity. I found it necessary to start by contextualizing things. In order to remind you that the online activism movement had started long before Mohamed Bouazizi's self-immolation, an event generally considered as the first spark of the Arab Spring. Rather, the online 
fight for freedom of speech, freedom and dignity started years before. In fact, at the time, in a media landscape that was characterized by its lack of diversity and monopoly by state actors, blogs and social networks, mainly Facebook and Twitter, played two important roles. First, they gradually became the most reliable and well-fed sources of information. Second, they represented an essential and effective tool for online mobilization. The despotic regime underestimated what such tools could bring to the Tunisian youth as they defied censorship, the complicity of the Tunisian elite with the regime, and the shameful silence of the West. When the dictator and his regime were working to muzzle Tunisians, its youth defied them, using these new tools to break the wall of silence and unveil the truth. Long before December the 17th, 2010, online activists conducted online campaigns that deeply embarrassed the regime. Some of these campaigns were meant to support prisoners of opinion or conscience, to advocate for freedom of speech prior to December 2010. These include inhabitants of the Gafsa mining basin and the social movement they started in 2008 to denounce the marginalization of their area, corruption and nepotism. At that time, online activism was mainly relegated to blogs. While blogs tend to be rather individual bloggers connect to one another thanks to aggregators and hypertext links. This is why the information couldn't spread widely, as was the case with Mohamed Bouazizi's self-immolation. The dissemination of the information was only limited to bloggers and those interested in following them. Nevertheless, the turning point was the demonstration against censorship organized on May 22, 2010, as part of a World War event. Tunisian activists geared up to peacefully demonstrate against Ammar 404. Ammar, of, uh, Ammar 404 is an imaginary person Tunisians have created to symbolize their country's filtering of the internet in the pan on error 404, messages users use to get when they try to access censored content online. I call this a turning point because this demonstration allowed online activism to meet the real world. It paved the way for real life participation and reopened the streets for protesters. Online activists left their screens and keyboards and challenged authorities on the ground. They succeeded in mobilizing people to take to the streets through the use of irony, humor, videos, songs, and various peaceful means of action. Thus, not only did the internet and the online activism allow for the dissemination of information in a country characterized by information blackouts and the absence of freedom of speech, it also served as a catalyst and an agent of mobilization for concrete actions. The online and offline fields of, field, sorry, of battle merged as the virtual world met the real one. Online activism presented a threat to the regime, which was why it resorted not only to censorship, but also to the arrest and the imprisonment of cyber activists who had to pay the price for their activism efforts. Zuhair Yahyawi, for example, who was the first cyber dissident to be arrested and imprisoned in Tunisia. Zuhair is considered as the martyr of internet as he died of a heart attack on March the 13th, 2015 from the weakening of his body by hunger strikes, torture and bad treatment. Similarly, Fatma Arabica is another blogger who had been detained for seven days in 2009. Therefore, online activism in Tunisia had started long before the revolution. From the late 1990s, online activists used the internet as a tool of contest and protest. In the beginning, online activists used forums 
and blogs to share their ideas and opinions and to denounce the wrongs of the regime, human rights violations, cases of censorship, and so on. They were tracked by the cyber police and faced censorship, assaults and arrests. Nevertheless, the impact of the online activism movement remained relatively limited as it was mainly linked to blogs with a limited audience and was easily censored. One of the important stages of the online activism movement had been the transition from online activism to real-world activism through a demonstration against censorship organized on May the 22nd, 2010. Subsequently, online activists, mainly bloggers, started to use social networks to disseminate their ideas and organize online campaigns to support a plethora of causes. But let's look at the role of social media during the uprising. When Mohamed Bazizi set his body on fire on the 17th of December 2010, online activists used the internet and their knowledge of ICT to spread the truth about what was going on and to mobilize their compatriots to act. They succeeded in showing that young Tunisians could challenge the regime and its oppressive forces. The youth offered their bare chests to, chest, sorry, to the bullets and truncheons of the repressive forces. They inhaled tear gas and slept on public places and public squares. Moreover, many of them mastered computer skills and new technologies of information and managed to go through the threads of the wall of silence and the leaden shroud that muzzled our country for decades. While the majority of local TV channels, radio stations and newspapers kept on spreading the propaganda of the regime and were working to falsify facts and fool the world, online activists were struggling to circumvent censorship, disseminate information and mobilize people. They also organized protest actions widely shared on social media and widely relayed by international media at a time when even foreign journalists were refused entry to our country. Some online activists traveled to Tunisia to cover live protest movements and show to the world that the situation in Tunisia was critical. Again, online activists had to pay the price of their activism. Several of them were arrested in the beginning of January 2011. In his last speech, delivered on the 13th of January 2010, uh, 2011, sorry, Ben Ali announced the lifting of censorship on the internet as well as the release of arrested online activists in an attempt to, pal uh, to placate the youth. However, this failed, as the same night online activists were mobilizing people to take to the streets on January 14, 2011, to demand the departure of Ben Ali. I will stop to underline the fact that the ouster of Ben Ali happened thanks to those women, men, the young and the old alike, and those who defied their fear and face the indiscriminate violence and repression from the security forces. The presence on the ground, demonstrations, marches and sit-ins of hundreds of thousands of Tunisians made the regime wobble. There were more than 300 martyrs, women and men sacrificed their lives for freedom. It is important to note that this happened in real life, not online. It is true that online activists contributed in unveiling the truth and helped to mobilize people, but we must not forget that the hundreds of thousands of people and the different social organizations who supported them were the ones who made a difference and made the dream a reality. The revolt movement originated in the remote, marginalized parts of the country, 
where people were demanding their right to employment, social justice and dignity. It is true that the internet played a role, but that role has been exaggerated. We must not forget that access to internet remains limited in Tunisia. According to Internet World Stats, the number of internet users was estimated at 3.6 million for a total population of 11 million. The number of Facebook users was estimated at 16, uh, one, uh, hundreds, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 16,000 users and the beginning of 2018 reaching 1.8 million in January 2011. The internet and social media attracted such, at, such attention that people turned to them as legitimate sources of information including foreign media outlets that started sharing material produced by online activists. In fact, and that internet and social media replaced the mass media on the national level and were able to attract the, inter the interest of some foreign media that started to share materials produced by online activists before being able to send reporters to Tunisia. Online activists were successful in generating revolutionary content that they distributed to their online networks as well as to their families, friends and people they know. They usually evoked conflict between traditional mass media and online media gave way to collaboration and complementarity. This complementarity facilitated the spread of information and the mobiliz mobilization of people. To conclude, while the role of social media was important during the revolution, it was the mobili mobilization of people on the ground that proved to be decisive in the revolution. And let me now talk about the role of online activism in Tunisia after the ouster of the dictator. After the departure of Ben Ali, a new phase of Tunisia's history started. After a few months of revolutionary euphoria, however, Tunisians realized and understood that toppling a dictator was only the first step. It doesn't necessarily establish freedom and prosperity. This is why different demonstrations and sit-ins were held after the ouster of Ben Ali. And the majority of people used social media to mobilize their compatriots and invite them to support their causes. In addition, many experts, researchers, journalists and politicians around the world focused on the role of online activism in the Tunisian revolution and the, and the outbreak of different revolutionary movements in the Middle East and in other parts of the world, like the Occupy movement in different parts of the world and the indignant movement in Spain. Online activism and social media were presented as unique tools that allowed these revolt movements to happen. Online activists and bloggers were glorified and gained acclaim. This focus on the role of ICT and online activism and the illusion of infinite power that was linked to them was tempting for most political parties and segments of civil society. They worked on exploiting the internet and its networks to consolidate their position in a country going through a democratic transition. They wanted to acquire more space on the net, so they recruited uh, young people and paid them not only to disseminate their propaganda, but also to discredit, discredit and defame their opponents through rumors, lies and dishonest online campaigns. Some political parties were so focused on gaining traction on the net that they forgot about the field work resulting in total failure. The miraculous tool became a double-edged sword. Even professional journalists focused on social media, especially Facebook, and here is necessary to mention that according to Internet World Stats, the number of Facebook users was estimated to 
16,000 users in the beginning of 2008 to reach 1,800,000 in January 2011. Even professional journalists started relying on Facebook as a legitimate source of information which led to unreliable information being reported and disseminated. Importantly, the online activism landscape changed after the collapse of the previous Ben Ali regime. It is true that some people, groups and civil society kept using this tool positively. However, some online activists who were committed and devoted to the cause of their country, as well as a significant number of young people, became the lackeys of political parties, using their knowledge to serve their interests. Unfortunately, clashes between different political parties and ideologies invaded the net. In general, Tunisians overestimated the role of social networks and forgot that they had to combine real and online actions to achieve their goals, to fulfill the objectives of the revolution. Today, some people think that a simple click on a like button of an event or demonstration is sufficient to initiate change. This is why a gap exists between the number of online protesters and those who are really on the ground. Generally, online support doesn't convert into real support. Another alarming fact today is the invasion of the internet by terrorists. They are using social media for different evil goals as it facilitates the recruitment of new members of terrorist groups and allows the rapid and wide dissemination of the death pro propaganda that such groups as ISIS are working on. Some people started to want to have recourse to censorship, but online activists don't see it as the right solution. The debate is still on ongoing. To sum up, I will say that for years, activists, users of the internet has helped to break the authoritarian control of the public space. During the Tunisian revolution, the internet and Facebook in particular had been widely used by Tunisians to circumvent censorship and regime propaganda that dominated the traditional media. Despite the fact that the use of internet for protest purposes in Tunisia wasn't new and has steadily developed since the late, the late 1990s, the significance of its role during the Tunisian revolution and in other Arab countries turned it into a legitimate medium of information. However, while the internet and online activism played a crucial role, we must not forget that the internet is just a tool. It is just a tool. We, ha we have to keep this in mind. It is not an autonomous actor. Other factors are important to achieve the real change. After the liberation of the public space, online activism plays a different role. That of building a functional public space leading to the building of democracy. Some people are using it in the right way, others are not. Moreover, we have to keep on mind, in mind that the use of social media tools don't have a single preordained outcome. The failure of the Iranian Green Movement or of the Syrian Revolution are good examples of the arbitrariness of the effects of information and communication technologies, ICTs, and online activism. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to join you in other events in Germany. Bye.